Vrindavan Rasha also took place in this month. I will explain in so much way. In this very month, taking day, Sarad Purnima, our Guru Maharaj entered in Nitya Lila, but it is also so honorable day. In morning, Pujabhata become Maharaj and myself had told something. Now I request Tripurari Maharaj to stay glorify our Guru Dev and give post Panjali, offering post Panjali by this, glorifying him. Now he will speak something about it. Sri Radha Krishna Param Sarvana Vrita Sri Vishana So I'm very uh, honored to be here in the presence of so many Vaishnavas on the auspicious day of the Tirubhav Mahamotsava of Puja Padvakti Pagyan Keshav Maharaj. But Narayan Maharaj asked me to speak something in glorification of his Guru Dev. Can you stand up and stand up? Can you stand up? They will see by here. I will speak louder. So, he has asked me to speak something in glorification of his Guru Dev. At the same time, I never met Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Maharaj, so I cannot say anything about much his, his concerning his personal yes. character. But I will try to say something about the nature of our gurus in our Guru Parampara, and certainly Pujapad Keshav Maharaj is one of the most qualified persons in that prestigious lineage. So many of us are gathered here and Pujapad Keshav Maharaj is guru to us from so many angles. However we think about him, we will have to think about him in terms of the word guru. He is the Guru Dev of his disciples here. He is the Nam Guru, Mantra Guru, Sannyas Guru of both Bhaktivedanta Trivikram Maharaj 
and Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj and others. And forgive me that I don't know so many of you, Shishas of Shilakeshav Maharaj. Then he also may be the, is the Param Guru of so many disciples of Sripad Narayan Maharaj. And for us, myself, Sripad Paramadwiti Maharaj, and others who are disciples of Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, then Keshav Maharaj is in our Guru Varga. So he is Guru to us also. So from so many angles, for all of us, today he is Guru. And every day, not just today, but today we have the great opportunity to remember this and think about the significance of such. However, from another side, the higher side, seated above us here, we have our Guru Parampara, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, uh, I cannot see it. Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, Bhok Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Prabhupada. Maharaj is telling, oh yes, all uh, uh, Chara Sampradaya, the uh, charges, Ramanuja Madhvanimbarka, Sri Vishnu Swami, and so forth. So from the higher side, then how will we view Keshav Maharaj? From lower side, all of us, he is Guru. But from higher side, then we may think that he is student. But actually, student means Guru in our Sampradaya, who is a good student of not only Guru, but Guru means Guru Parampara. This person can teach, which is the function of Guru, that which our Sampradaya is about. It is about service and about love. So our Gurus are very different from so many other traditions. Everybody wants to have a Guru that is in strong position and not fallen. But in one sense, we want the fallen Guru who is fallen in love. This is our Sampradaya. Who is fallen in love. It is said, Rupa Goswami Prabhupada has made Purnamasi speak in Vidagda Madhava, his play, a very nice verse. Tunde Tandavani Ratim Vitanute Tundavali Lodhaye. This is, in one sense, the problem of our gurus. They have a difficulty. And on the basis of this difficulty, they are moving in the world. What is that? When they hear the name of Krishna, and when the name of Krishna dances on their tongue, when the holy name of Krishna enters the ear, then big problem comes. The problem is, they need so many ears and so many tongues, millions of ears and millions of tongues to take advantage of Krishna, this name. And on the basis of this necessity, so many people are coming to meet that necessity. So many so-called shishyas, so many so-called disciples, they are friends, they are sent to Sri Guru from the higher side to assist him in this necessity, giving him so many tongues and so many ears to take advantage of Krishna Nam. So in our Sampradaya, our Gurus have a difficulty. They have a weakness. That weakness is that they have fallen in love. And they are telling us about the weakness of the Absolute. Everyone wants to conquer the truth. But our Sampradaya is giving a secret, a secret way to do so. 
Our Sampradaya is telling us that the absolute truth has a weakness. He's a lover, and love is a weakness. And love is also the greatest strength. When we fall in love, then we have the greatest security. If we can fall in love with the absolute truth, we will be in the strongest position at the same time that love is a weakness. So this is the secret message of our Sampradaya. They have shown a secret way to enter into the land of truth and love. And Bhakti Prakyan Keshav Maharaj is a great lover of the absolute. And on the strength of his tears for Krishna, crying for Krishna, this is our kind of guru, simply crying, that's all. And on the strength of this crying, so many people coming to assist. And so we are all gathered here on the strength of this kind of inner necessity of Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Maharaj and others in our Guru Parampara like him. And we should try to understand this message. It is very simple. Try to, that we must come to cry for Krishna. Once our Guru Maharaj, Bhaktivedanta Sami Maharaj, Prabhupada, he was asked about yoga. How to practice yoga? He says, we just cry for Krishna. That is our yoga. That's all. Hmm? So this may sound very easy, but it is a little difficult. Not, what is it? Because tadasma sharam hridayam vatedam yad grihamana varinama deyari yad vikrite tarta yathavikara nitram jale nitram jalam ashu raheshu harsha This crying is not coming. That is our problem, our difficulty. Even after chanting repeatedly, because heart is very stone-like. So we, on days, occasion like this, we have the opportunity to think more seriously about this and cry to our Guru Varga, our Guru Parampara, that they can help us to become a crier, a lover for the Absolute also. That our heart may melt, that we can really take advantage of all that is present in Krishna, in Hare Krishna. So, in this way I offer my regard to Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Maharaj, who I don't know about personally very much, but I know that he is a great Paramhamsa Guru in our uh, Guru Parampara, and we can see from the result, Falena Parichiyate, now in all over the world, his fame, Eve Jasht Bushuk Tribhuvan. It is going, it is actually all over the world, already known, but in a remote corner of the world, the Western world, a distant place. We, many people coming from the Western world, we think that is the, where things are happening. And we are coming to a remote corner in India, but it is just the opposite. Hmm? So his fame is already known. Swargalok, from Swargalok and above, from Golok, hmm? all the way down, it is known. And now some of us from a remote, very distant corner, far off place of the world, are also coming to know. Hmm? That is our good fortune, that we can all be gathered here on this day to offer our regard to Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Maharaj and whole Guru Parampara. The strength, the position of Vaishnav will be evaluated more so by how he regards the higher Vaishnav than from the other side in terms of how many people from the lower section he can bring in. In the case of Keshav Maharaj, we see personally and through his shishas, so many people from the lower section are coming in. And at the same time, such high regard he had for his Guru Dev and the Guru Parampara. Hmm? Even we know of one story in which 
He was prepared to risk his life for Bhakti Sanam Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada in Navadvitam. When the, his life was to be threatened, you have seen the picture of Keshav Maharaj. He appears somewhat similar in beautiful form to Bhakti Sanam Saraswati Goswami Maharaj. So when his life was in danger in Parikram, then Keshav Maharaj took the dress of Sanyasi as Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur in case he would be assassinated that would come on Keshav Maharaj rather than his Gurudev. But not only physical life he was ready to risk. That is a very small thing to risk the physical life for our Gurudev. We cannot even think of that practically. That will frighten us. Hmm? But we are expected to die in another way also. More than bodily death. When Sanatana Goswami was prepared to die give his body under the wrath cart, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, that is a very small thing, to give up the body. Hmm? If I could get love of Krishna simply by giving up this body, I would have died a thousand times. Hmm? So another kind of death that is required. Hmm? We'll die in order to live on that plane. We have to die to the killing tendency. In Srimad Bhagavatam, we have a very beautiful beginning. In Vastu Nidosh Nidesh Shlok of Srimad Bhagavatam, we hear Dharma Projita Kaita Bhutra Karamo Nirmat Saranam Satam. If we can live through the heart palpitation of this verse, this verse should give heart palpitation. Dharma Projita Kaita Bhutra Karamo Nirmat Saranam Satam. This book, this teaching is only about loving God. That means as inhabitants of Vrindavan love God, they no, have no separate interest. No separate, no se they have a life, life of God becomes their life. Giving up all separate interest to the extreme. This is the subject of Srimad Bhagavatam. And this is very difficult for us to listen to. We want our own life, hmm? separate life. If we can live through the heart, as I say, we will give heart palpitation. Oh my gosh. In this book, only the glorification of God. Hmm? So this is the death we want. Death to self-interest, and it will be replaced by interest of the real self, interest in Radha Krishna. So the strength, therefore, of Vaishnav is how much he has regard for the higher section. This is the real evaluation. Hmm? And we find that to the extreme in Keshav Maharaj, and we hope also that by coming on occasion like this with opportunity to glorify him, that we may also grow in this regard and get strengthened to do any kind of work for the Guru Parampara as they may like preaching in the world. Many people can, it is not so difficult to intellectually understand the philosophy with your head and then speak and attract some people. But if you want them to stay and to go back to Godhead, you have to it has, that has to be in the heart also, with some feeling. So it may be easy to attract some followers, but it will be harder to show regard for the higher section. Because in that way, there can be no cheating. The higher Vaishnava is not blind. Surup Shakti is not blind. Hmm? The lower section, is blind people we are bringing forward. Hmm? So we may fool them, but the higher section we cannot. So the position of Vaishnava will be really evaluated by the extent to which he shows regard to the higher section. One time, some of my god brothers came to Pujapad Sridhar Maharaj, and some of us were seated there. There was some controversy at the time, and my god brothers came and they told Sridhar Maharaj, the, we love you and we respect you very highly, but these men sitting before you, they are all using you. 
we want to tell you. So Siddharmar said to them, so, you think I'm a fool? This is your glorification, that I cannot know who is cheating me. I need your help. So the higher section point is we cannot fool them. Hmm? We can only fool ourselves. So on occasion like this, we have opportunity to glorify our Guru Parampara and one great Acharya in this line of three, our Guru Maharaj, Siddhar Maharaj, Keshav Maharaj, these three are going, their prachar is going all over the world. So I feel very honored and I pray for uh, Pujapad Keshav Maharaj's blessings and the blessings of all of his shishas and grand disciples and friends on this day. We have heard Shepa Kukurari Maharaj. I will rest, I will request Shishi Parmat Daiti Maharaj, Shepa Parmat Daiti Maharaj to say something and I will tell you. Yananjana Shalakaya Shakshun Militam Janeta Smai Shri Gurave Namah Mukham karoti vachalam pangum langayate gadim yakti patamaham vande shi guru jinataranam Vindayai tulasi devai priyai kesa vachacha Krishna bhakti bradi de satya vachana monama It is a great honor for me to be here together with all of you. I'm very thankful to Pujapad, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Maharaj to extend this invitation to this, uh, to us to participate in the glorification of uh, Parama Pujapad, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshava Maharaj, who as Trupa Rai Maharaj also, I didn't have a conscious encounter with only in the early days when we came to India there were sometimes meetings but um, actually it took a long time for me to become aware of the importance of all the Vaishnava Acharyas we were very submerged in the initial enthusiasm of serving our uh, own Guru Deva Srila Esri Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada and but Krishna is doing things in a certain way that we cannot avoid. If we get stuck in our spiritual life, something will take place so that we are mercifully pushed forward, even though it's a little bit painful sometimes because we think we should stay where we are, but it's not always that way. Anyhow, I had just recently the opportunity of going through a book by uh, Parama Puja Pahad Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshava Maharaj regarding the Mayavadi philosophy and outstanding in this, in this book to me was after every chapter it says Vaishnavas Ki Jai huh? so it was very I could sense from this book the incredible enthusiasm and the energy emanating from the preaching of his just like I heard uh, Srila Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he would g go and shake somebody to take Krishna. He would take them. You don't lose that opportunity of taking Krishna Bhakti this lifetime. You can't waste your lifetime. So I felt that was coming also from uh, Keshwa Maharaj, just by every, after every paragraph, Vaishnavas Ki Jai. And the other day I was reading, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur said, that we should not associate even with a person who hesitates to criticize the Mayavad. So that's pretty surprising when you hear the Vaishnavas always talking about humility and Trinata, uh, But when it comes that somebody defies the Supreme Personality of Godhead and thus he loses the great opportunity of the human form of life, we cannot just sit quiet there and say Hari Bol. No, then we have to go and say, listen what you're losing, the greatest love, the greatest wonder. And so this book gave me a little perception of who that great personality, Parama Pujapad, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshavar Maharaj actually was. So in this regard, I wanted to read to you a, a verse of the Bhagavatam, which um, 
shows the importance of such personalities. Rahuganaita tapasva tapasa najati najjaya nirvapanat griyatva najchanda sa naiva jalagni suriyai vina mahat padara jo bishekam. My dear King Rahugana, unless one has the opportunity to smear his entire body with the dust of the lotus feet of a pure and elevated devotee, it is impossible to develop devotion to the Supreme Lord Hari. The absolute truth cannot be realized by practicing the vows of celibacy as a brahmachari, following the tenets of household life, renouncing the comfort of home and family life, accepting full renunciation as a sannyasi and undergoing severe penances by keeping oneself submerged in cold water in winter and standing surrounded by fire or in the scorching heat of the sun in summer in order to propitiate the demigods studying the Vedas etc. In other words without being blessed by a pure devotee's mercy. It is impossible to learn the absolute truth or to approach the Supreme Lord. So I think that, in a way, really sums it up what the importance of such personalities are. We have to somehow or other get the shade of their lotus feet, the grace, the, the nectar flowing from their lotus lips, and to understand the real inner meaning of what they are saying. Here we have a saying in the West, which is quite interesting because it links into this uh, aspect. It says, it doesn't matter what you know, it matters who you know. Just like when there is yasya deve para bhakti yata deve tata guru. If we have full faith in the Shastras and in the spiritual master, then all the important things of the scriptures, they will be revealed within your heart. Not that you, like I've, some of my god brothers, I'm surprised, they actually, they've studied so much, they've actually almost memorized many scriptures. I don't know where they take that time, I never found it yet. Uh, but they memorize that and then they come, they turn around and a few simple things like love and trust relationship, they cannot understand and I cannot understand that. When you read so many books, it's all there. This is the whole message, is love and trust and serving the great devotees. So in that sense, if we have that connection with a pure devotee and we surrender to him, then so many wonderful things come. And we are seeing that Krishna is giving that indication, he's teaching that to us in one way or another. The glory of the Vaishnavas is coming to light as time goes by. Nevertheless, I also want to humbly request you, all my friend, and that you bless us, that I may understand something of the secrets of Vaishnava Bhakti. Of course, above all, Paramapucha Pad, Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj, that he will also bless us and Puja uh, Trivikra um, Maharaj and all the assembled great souls. Uh, but also one humble request I'm making to you, and that is we should not think that uh, it is only by the person we know. There's something more to it. It doesn't really matter who you know. It matters what you do for him. Service relationship is 90%, if not more, in the devotional service in the devotional line. So we may have the greatest the spiritual master or we may belong to the greatest spiritual mission, but it will depend what we what will we do for them? What will our contribution be there? Or are we just there to see what we can get in a consumer attitude? No, we should be ready to give ourselves. And what that given, giving process implies, I would just want to make a humble remark in this, this regard. And that is, some or other there has been in the sociological situation of Western Vaishnavas in 1996, we have gone through quite some developments. Of course, in India, the devotees have a 5,000 year old tradition as far as Vaishnava ashrams is concerned. We don't have that in the West. It's a very young thing just developing. And we have also gone through some hard times in the separation of our uh, spiritual master, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, when he departed from this world. But anyhow, 
Some or other we are, we are celebrating today in a temple established by Parama Pujapan, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshava Maharaj. And this is a place which has many significance. One of it, of course, unforgettable, is that our own spiritual master accepted the renounced order of life in this premises and then started his mission of going to the whole world and taking this message of Mahaprabhu to the fallen, the wretched souls who were absorbed in sinful life and nothing else. So therefore, we should not forget that the great souls, they also did a great job a great service, establishing ashrams. And ashram life, for those who know that, it's one of the most difficult things to go through. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, our great protector, he runs road. The living together with other devotees sometimes appears to be unbearable. But we can only recommend to you to anyhow bear it because the rest of the life is more unbearable. And if you're going to be out there with your television set, you're not going to get Guru's grace. No, you're just going to get flooded with all kinds of stool-like thoughts and mentalities. So we have to be at the feet of Guru. And in the worship of Sri Sri uh, Mahaprabhu Radha Govinda Ji, we have to be there where that is going on. And that is kind of hard, these ashrams, to establish them, it is a it's painful process, but it is necessary. We cannot, one of my god brothers the other day told me, oh, the time for ashram life is out. Now we should uh, learn how to adapt everybody by himself. I said, sorry, my friend, where did you join the movement? He said, well, in the Brooklyn temple. I say, really, yeah, interesting. I joined in another temple. Now you go around and ask all the devotees where their devotional career started, and you bet there's some deity worship, there's some sadhana program, there's some daily classes involved where it actually started and where your spiritual life can get strength. <laughs> because without that strength, it won't work. Even though sometimes people say, oh, but I belong to a great mission, everything is fine. Or I have a great spiritual master, I'm already saved. No, it's not true. We have to follow the Mahat. We have to follow to make the spiritual life successful. Srila Rupa Goswami, he said, Jano Sangat Sato Vride, to follow in the footsteps of the great souls and to look what they did. Srila Paramapuja Pad. He was a back-pushing person according to his own description. Nevertheless, he opened, I don't know how many, six temples or seven. Uh, uh, and everyone, and Keshva Maharaj, Goswami Maharaj, uh, and Madhava Paramapuja Maharaj, all these great souls, what did they do? They went out and worked so hard for Srila Prabhupada. And they established the places to take shelter in. So in this way, I think we have a lot of service to do. And the most wonderful thing about this, when we get absorbed in that service according to the wishes of our Guru Deva, our mind will be controlled. Because the Western mind, to control it, well, I can only judge by myself. And I must admit, that's a difficult thing to accomplish, you know? This Western mind, my goodness, no? We don't forget, we were brought up with competition, sense gratification, pornography, envy, get every, it was just unbelievable how uh, some Vaishnava saints could come and pull us out of there. There's no way to explain that scientifically except by this verse we just heard. We get the dust of the lotus feet of a devotee on our head and we smear our whole body with it and we are ready to act in such a way that they are pleased with us. Then all the good fortune will come to us and to all of those who will come in contact with you. With you. That is the most wonderful thing which I have been able to appreciate. And I think then all the other blessings which Guru Deva has in store for you, they will trickle down in the internal side of you. Gradually you start to realize, wait a second, I have nothing to do with this material world. This is a place to waste time. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, he gave the analogy that this material world is like a bathroom. And we are just here, we have a business to do, I'm not so happy business, bathroom business. But we are here now, let's do it and get out of here real fast. 
and that's the spirit which I have been uh, able to appreciate from our Godiamat family. Hare Krishna. Hare and Diksha appearance of Vaishnava is of the same meaning, I am told. Of the same meaning, no sorrow, no grief in this appearance and no sorrow in birth or appearance. All of the same meaning, but it is Impossible for me to understand. Then, how can you speak of it? How can I explain it to you if I am ignorant of that? Both the same, love and rapture. It is not possible for me to understand. So I cannot understand the true situation of this appearance. Another thing, we were always after judging some brother. Sarve Brahmaja Brahmana. But he is that. All of us are Brahman. Why some call? Chaitriya, Vaishya, Sudra. Being a descendant of the same parent, same father. Why there is difference? The difference is on the judgment of quality. Not by birth it can be had. All of us are not Brahmins. So the disciples are the descendant of the Sampradaya is not true. <coughs> but we had got the position of the equality of Gurudev. Certainly he is the descendant, true descendant. And how it will be thought? It will not by accepting the mantra from the any disciple of the Guru Dev, he cannot claim that I am of, I belong to that Sampradaya.
We are trying to serve him, serve our divine master. But this of service is not possible for a true devotee, it is a false devotee. <laughs> but everyone should try to devote himself, his self, own self, or, or his or all belongings. Who can devote everything of him is called true devotee. The more wise wanting, the more shortage, the more we are removed from his service. So merely by accepting chant mantras from Gurudev is not the position, will not be the position of pure devotion. Everyone differs because difference is the nature of this universe and also in him. Not out of this um, no, no, all are not of the same merit. My Divine Master, everyone wants to praise His Divine Master. No one is willing to he had the fame of him. This is a qualification, good qualification for a disciple. There is no wrong in the dis in the Guru De in Guru Deva. But there are scriptures. Guru Rupi Avalipthasya Karja Karja Majananda Utpatha Pratipannasya Pradita Yogiya. How it is possible? It is contradicted. Guru Rupi Avalipthasya. Why such order? Pradita Yogiya. This should be very carefully judged. There is a depth of thinking in this point. Moving on the surface is not the proper situation. Who can understand the true Willing of Guru Bhad Padma. Is it pure desire? My Guru Dev. One example was said, my good friend. Ram, to me, Kothai Gya Chile. It is asking, Ram, where did you go? Why it is in this tone, it is simple asking. But if I address Ram, where did you go? That is not simple asking. This is objection. This is objection. I object this. Why did you go out without informing me, without taking permission of me?
So, scriptures can be quoted in favor of anybody. But it is not the true lesson. Jasya deve pada bhukti, jatha deve tatha guru, tatha yuva. Tashyaite kohita jartha apakasante mahatmana. The true aspect can be assured by that pada bhukti to that guru padma. Everything is very difficult. It is not so easy as we think. To serve him, to serve the Divine Master is also very difficult. The beloved disciple can understand the inner principle of him, but I am not so beloved. This is my so I pray the beloved disciples to be gracious on me so that I can understand the true principle of my divine master. That's all. That's all.